Very intriguing. He was born in Baku, Azerbaijan, the son of a German mining engineer and a Russian wife. He was raised largely in Germany and fought for that country in World War I, being wounded twice. He won the Iron Cross. But secretly, he was a communist. After earning his Ph.D. in political science, he went underground and became a public intellectual. Then he became a journalist and was posted to Tokyo. There he became the party animal of the Nazi inner circle, drinking women. His espionage was unmasked in 1944, and he was hanged in Sugamo prison. Who was he? Well... He was the charismatic Richard Sorge who beguiled Nazis with his charm. He certainly influenced women. One of his slew of lovers recalled the first time she ever saw him. I quote verbatim. It was as if a stroke of lightning ran through me. In this one second, something awoke in me that had slumbered until now. Something dangerous, dark inescapable, unquote. <laughs> Whoa, what a guy! This playboy also had a talent for intelligence. He did not cast himself as a Nazi ideologue, no. Rather, he performed the role of the heavy-drinking womanizer who filed a story now and again. He even womanized with the wife of the military attaché, Eugene Ott, who still considered himself to be his best friend after he found out that he was having an affair with his wife. In fact, Ott used Sorge as his main advisor on Japanese affairs. Sorge was a brilliant performer in the espionage game. He warned Moscow that 190 German divisions were positioned to invade Russia in June 1941, but... Moscow did not take the news seriously. However, he did alert Moscow that Japan would not invade and join the war against Russia. This Moscow did take seriously, and it allowed Russia to free up resources to move to Russia's western front. But he was betrayed by a fellow communist who gave up his name after he was repeatedly beaten. Under arrest, Sorge was hopeful that he would be exchanged for a Japanese spy held in Moscow. But Moscow continued to deny any knowledge of Sorge, so the Japanese hanged him. Only in the 1960s did the Soviets recognize him and honor him as a hero of the Soviet Union. A bit late. So why didn't the Gestapo investigate this womanizer with an open ex-communist past? First, he did not fit the bill of or stereotype of a communist traitor. He was sexually wild and charming towards men. He had a cover story like that of Guy Burgess, the way-out-of-the-closet gay diplomat whom nobody thought could be a communist. He just didn't seem the type. He was simply a playboy. Also, more than a few national socialists had earlier been communists. This was not that unusual to go from Soviet-style communism to national socialism in the mid-1930s. So, Sorge was a Soviet dashing spy you would like to meet. Yes, you would like to meet him. But here the story becomes complicated. As we will see, in Shanghai he recruited a woman whose name was Sonia to pass British nuclear secrets to the Soviets. He becomes the enemy. The Kensington Minute does not represent the official view of the United States government. Out here. <laughs>